Now, we have these pictures that you have sent into our eyewitness portal, beginning with this set of images from Gidankura in Karu, local government area of Nasaro State, showing people whom our eyewitness reporter says are students of a government school learning under a tree shade. He's worried by this setting, where some of the students even learn on their knees. He therefore calls on the state government to attend to these children and their likes anywhere in the state. Next is this photo slide from Lowell Adeyemi Link Road, Alagwere, in Lagos State, showing this area, which our eyewitness reporter says has been marked for construction. He reports that the project, which began two months ago, has led to the demolition of some buildings there. But in spite of that, residents are happy knowing that they will benefit once the project is completed. And finally, is this image from Ofada, local council area of Ogun State, showing electricity poles and their cables stretching to the middle of the road. Our eyewitness reporter is worried that this could be dangerous in the event that the cables fall is calling for the relocation of the poles. We do sincerely thank you for sending in these pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. The politics now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has reiterated its position to go ahead with its schedule of elections as released on the 9th of January 2018. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu has said this in a chart with Channel's television in Benin City. He also said that the Commission will soon make public its findings on the issue of alleged underage voting in some parts of the country. The INEC boss also added that the Commission is fully ready for the upcoming elections in Ekiti and Oshu State with the determination to make the exercise better than the previous ones it conducted. In October last year, we released a timetable and schedule of activities for both AKT and Oshun elections. For AKT, the process has kick-started as required by law with the publication of notice on the 4th of this month. We have done so and campaigns as well as party primaries will begin on the 15th. Uh, the election will hold on the 14th of July. We will release uh, the notice for the Oshun election in June and then uh, campaigns and other activities will proceed on the basis of the timetable we have earlier released leading to the elections on the 22nd of September. So we are on course for the two states. We released the timetable and schedule of activities for the general elections way back on the 9th of January this year. On the basis of the law as it exists, there is no other law. Uh, there is a bill, um, but that bill hasn't become law. So there's no legal lacuna. We are proceeding on the basis of the law as it exists. The People's Democratic Party National Chairman Prince Uche Sekondos has dragged Mr. Lai Mohammed and the federal government to court over what he says is defamation of character. Mr. Sekondos is asking the court to make the information minister pay the sum of 1.5 billion naira for damages for causing him humiliation, castigation and the attack on his person and integrity. The PDP chairman's name was top on the list of alleged looters released by the minister after the PDP asked the APC government to give names of those they claim looted the nation's treasury. One Mr. Muhammad, on Mr. Mohammed's list, Mr. Secondos was said to have allegedly received a sum of 200 million naira from a former national security advisor, Colonel Sambodaswiki, retired. Mr. Secondos has denied collecting the sum from the former NSA. Meanwhile, the leaders of the People's Democratic Party in Oshun State have decried the burning of the party's flag at its functional sectariat in the state, allegedly by the supporters of the former deputy governor of the state, Mr. Iyola Omishori. The Oshun State PDP leaders, under the aegis of Forum of Ex-PDP Political Office Holders, are demanding an apology from Mr. Omishori, whom they say allegedly supervised the burning of the flag and other emblems of the party. The spokesperson of the forum, Tajuddin Adeyemi, told journalists that the forum was shocked, saddened and disappointed at the development. More stories now. The All Progressives Congress Technical Committee on the controversial tenure extension, led by the Governor of Plateau State, Mr. Solomon Lalong, 
has submitted its report to the party's National Working Committee. Governor Lalong gave the report of the chairman of the party, John Oyegu, today at the party's headquarters in Abuja. Details of the report has not been disclosed, but it may contain suggestions on how the party should conduct its congresses and elections ahead of the termination of the four-year term on the 30th of June this year. The Lalong Committee was set up after the stalemate over the legality of the decision of the party's National Executive Committee, which gave a 12-month extension to the Oyegun leadership and the other leadership of the parties across the state. President Muhammad Buhari has departed Abuja for his hometown, Daura, in Katsina State. The president arrived at Daura this evening and was received at the airport by the state governor, Aminu Mazari, and other state executives. The visit comes a few weeks after President Muhammad Buhari hosted the Senior Citizens Forum of Katsina State as his private residence in Dora. Governor Mazari had told reporters during the visit that members of the group were in Dora to show their solidarity and full support for the President. Uninspiring and diversionary, that's how the Catholic Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Matthew Kuka, describes the recently released list of alleged looters by the federal government. Well, he says that the list hardly speaks of the conduct of politics in Nigeria, which he believes is a criminal enterprise. The cleric is, however, supporting the federal government's decision to give amnesty to Boko Haram, saying that security is not all about guns and bullets. You're speaking on our current affairs program, Hard Copy. Quite uninspiring. I mean, I'm really not, it's not something that I find interesting because, um, it doesn't speak to the politics of Nigeria, which has always run on the oxygen of corruption. And from the last local government chairman, councillor, senator, president, governor, it would be nice to know one single politician who has run for office um, with what you call hard-earned money. It would also be interesting to know, uh, corruption is not something that government fights. Government might offer a lead but it will get you nowhere unless you have the buy-in of the people. And at, a level, at an analytical level, you can look at corruption as sociology, you can look at it as economics, you can look at it as politics, you can look at it as psychology, you can look at it as theology, whatever it is. The critical question everybody must answer in Nigeria is that if corruption were so terribly bad, just like the devil, how is it that Nigerians have become so comfortable with it? How is it that from bishop to priest, from priest to imam, from imam to governor, from governor to counselor, from counselor to everybody, no one seems to have a sense of moral revulsion enough to say, let's go and pound the streets and say this nonsense must end. I raised the issue of amnesty. I think I was one of the first people to raise the issue of amnesty about five years ago. Shortly after that, I think Cardinal, His Eminence Cardinal, Ekan, I mean Cardinal Onaikan, made a statement. I know how much we have, we have vilified. But I was pretty convinced about what I was saying, that look, um, for me, if you mention the word amnesty, Nigerians think it simply means shaking hands and telling everybody to go home. Um, from where we are with Boko Haram and with the Chibo girls and the Dapche abductions and so on, it is clear that even if the government is now talking about negotiation, you cannot, you know, like Mandela said, only, only, the, only the free can negotiate and only the strong can negotiate. If Boko Haram had been perceived to be as so weakened as it is, we would not be talking of negotiation. So clearly, those with superior information and superior knowledge, which is what government is all about, know something that the rest of us don't. You're watching the News at 10 live from Lagos. Let's quickly take you to our Abuja studios where Malkwe Ogun Yusuf is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Malkwe. Hello, Gimba. It's good to see you. Uh, we start in the northwest. As part of efforts to stem the crisis between farmers and herdsmen in some parts of the country, the Kano State government is repeating its call for herdsmen to relocate to the state. Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje says a convergence of herdsmen in Kano State will greatly reduce the tension between farmers and herdsmen as the state is blessed with dams and grazing areas. Governor Ganduji explains that the state is already developing grazing areas in anticipation of an influx of herdsmen to the state. The Kano state government renews its call for herdsmen to relocate to the state. 
at a news conference in Abuja, the Kano State Governor admits that the Middle Belt is blessed with more grazing areas, but the state is out to end the perennial conflict. Middle Belt is more blessed with the grazing areas. That is why the problem is concentrated in the Middle Belt, because of the climate is different. The climate is more friendly to the herdsmen rather than up in the north. But equally the same, we have started providing some facilities. We identify five grazing areas which we would like to develop, and uh, we are discouraging our people our hearts meant to go outside the state. The governor used the occasion to call on President Buhari to contest the 2019 general presidential elections. This call is supported by the Southwest Youth Movement, who also stressed the need for continuity in governance. I'm happy that it is not Mr. President who said he will continue. It is people that are saying he should continue. But Mr. President, has not made up his mind yet. But when he came to Kano, I told him, any time he decides not to contest, we will take him to court. I would like to appeal to Nigerians not to be moved by any political distraction or propaganda from any political parties. Let's continue to pray for our great nation. Although various groups have been calling on President Buhari to go for a second term in office, the president is yet to declare his intentions. In Borno State, families of nomadic cattle herdsmen in Meduguri have been receiving food items from the state government as motivation for enrolling their children in schools through a special scholarship program. The parents had earlier met with the school authority, pleading that the holiday be skipped for their children to continue to attend classes and enjoy their daily free meals. The plea got the attention of the governor, Kashim Shatima, who swiftly came up with this intervention to meet the nutritional needs of the pupils, even while on holiday. And the Nasarawa State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria is concerned about the plight of displaced persons and wants the government to ensure their resettlement. Members of a delegation from the Christian Association of Nigeria expressed their concern when they paid Governor Tanko Almakura a courtesy visit at the government house in Lafia, the state capital. The governor gave them the assurance that arrangements are already in place for the resettlement and asked all the religious denominations in the state to work together towards restoring peace. 